Man, they're not showing Doc Rivers no love. None. You are locked on 76ers, your daily Philadelphia 76ers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for making Locked On 76ers your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, Mitch? How you been, bro? Man, I'm good, Keith, man. You know, I got a chance to watch that horrible all-star happening. And, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm good. Ready, ready Better for you than me. Better huh? you than me. I, didn't, I didn't see it at all. I, I saw a of the Steph Curry uh, three-point contest, you yeah. know, young lady. Um, I saw a highlight of the slam dunk contest, but as far as that game, I didn't see anything. And, I, and I'm glad I didn't. I'm glad I didn't because I, I watched I watched about five minutes of the game, man. And, I said, and with all them threes, I said, nah, I'm not going to do it this year. Nah. Nah, not at all. Not at all. But listen, we got a lot to talk about. So, you know, and I, you know, it's funny. We're going to lead off with two former 76ers, one the coach, the other one a player, Doc Rivers and JJ Reddick. Seems like they're going at it. Mm -hmm. Then another 76ers chimes in, Pat Bev. I hate to see this stuff, man. I'll be honest with you. It's a lot of like drama, dumb stuff, whatever. So we want to talk about that. Then we also got to talk about Pat Bev's expectations, right? I'm not Pat Bev, Kyle Lowry. Kyle's expectations for this season. Mm -hmm. And then in the third segment, Joel Embiid, is Joe coming back? Like, what's the thought process on that? So there's a lot going on. Now, here's the thing. For people who don't know, and I'm paraphrasing, you know, Doc Rivers has a reputation around here as somebody who – throws people under the bus, also as a guy who always makes excuses. And J.J. Reddick was on on TV yesterday on ESPN, and basically he said that about Doc. Well, Mm -hmm. after that, Pat Bev comes to his defense and, and, and says something about J.J. Reddick in regards to, you know, the Clippers when they – because. Doc Rivers is the coach, J.J. Reddick on the Clippers, and he's saying that's the only deal that you could have had, the only place you could have had, and Doc saved his career. And then they go back and forth. And then Doc's son, Austin Rivers, gets involved in all this and that. Then Kendrick Perkins gets involved. Then uh, it's just, I don't know, Mitch, is unnecessary drama, if you ask me. Yeah, man. You know, it's just crazy. It's like – the internet is becoming, you know, this, everything is being becoming club shade shade. Everybody now, you know, these these guys who are supposed to be the ultimate warriors, man, they all have like uh, testosterone beasts behind the keyboards. You know, everybody's going at everybody. You know, everybody wants to ramp it up. I think this is part of the Donald Trumpism of Donald Trumping of the world. Um. You know, it's obviously guys out there in that league just don't like Doc. I know in Philadelphia, we don't, you know, we, we tend to blame Doc, even though Doc gave, or let, me, let me not say we, because I don't blame him. I, I, he wasn't out there on the court, you know, wearing a dress when they had 20-point leads over Atlanta. That was your Philadelphia 76ers wearing those dress in the heels. Um, you know, <laughs> I mean, you know, if you call a spade a spade, call a spade a spade. You know, um, but yeah, he a lot of people don't like him. I like Doc. <clears throat> he has, you know, he's blown the three one leads he can never run from that he's blown. Um, didn't Kevin Durant once blow a three to one lead? It's lots of guys who've blown three to one leads who've been more intimately involved with it than the than the than the coach. But JJ went in on him, you know, JJ went in on him. Uh <clears throat> You know, and I've heard other guys going on. Like, you know, uh, Philadelphia's very own Rasheed Wallace. Rasheed, 
you know, who, who was a huge 76ers fan, uh, you know, it, it can't stand, it can't stand him. You, you know, if you say, if you say Doc, to, to Rashid, Rashid will be like, there's only one doc, and that's Julius Winfield Irvin. You know, he's Glenn. So, um, yeah, doc's catching a lot of heat, and I think some of it is, you know, because his team is, what are they, what, what's their record now? Are they like three and seven under him? Something like that? They struggle. They, they struggle. Mm-hmm. Three and seven over their last ten? Yeah, three. Well, the problem is... See, I think the thing with Doc, and I and I love Doc. I got a lot of respect for him. But like the, he's a like him do. The, 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 the problem is whenever they lose, and I guess this is what JJ is saying. It's like sometimes you lose and you say, you know what, we just lost. Uh-huh. You don't come and say we lost because we had to travel, and whoever yeah. the schedule together didn't know anything about the schedule. Or we ran a play and nobody knew what they were doing. Mm-hmm. Or uh, yeah, cool. that falls on you. Yeah. So, so the thing is, it's kind of like, you know, he has a reputation of of throwing people under the bus yeah. and also making excuses. So I think that's what JJ was saying. You know, the thing about Doc, though, um, I mean, you could read, you could go both ways. You know, the thing about Doc is. When Doc Rivers became the coach of the 76ers, Joel and B's game elevated. He mm-hmm. went from being a pretty good player, a, a perennial all-star, to a perennial MVP candidate and eventually yep. an MVP. Right. Mm-hmm. So he elevated his game. Um they also had the the best three year run. In a long time. I mean, we're talking about back since the 80s, right? But at the same time, back in the 80s, that team was going deep in the playoffs or they would lose in the Eastern Conference Finals to the Boston Celtics, right? So right. Uh, stuff like that. So the thing is, the end result is people will say none of that matters because you didn't get out of the second round. You didn't do what you couldn't out coach. I mean, you couldn't. Go get beyond what um, you know. Brett Brown did. Now the thing is, it's like you know. Again, I felt like he was a good coach. He couldn't get out of the second round, um, but he's easy for people to pick on, just because of he has the excuses, you know, right. at times the time. But I mean, I like Doc. You know, we didn't always see eye to eye. No, y'all didn't. <laughs> it was Norway, but it was something that we would hash out. Right. And it was something that, like, you know, I've never, you know, I've never said anything behind his back. I don't know if he hit <laughs> me or not, but I never did. I always said it to his face. Mm-hmm. So it is what it is. But I, I personally, I hate seeing this because to me, it looks like ESPN, like ratings month. Like, yeah. Doc used to work for ESPN. Now they're killing them on ESPN. Then you got other people. I mean, it just it just seemed like a bad look, man. It just seems yeah. like a bad look. Yeah, and, and, and honestly, you know, this whole thing about Doc getting them out of out of the second round, God couldn't coach this organization beyond the second round from what we've seen now. You know, I mean, last time I guess was the last time Billy Cunningham. You know, I mean, it hasn't been. Since, I mean, you had to have like a Hall of Fame coach to get this organization, which which is where Doc is headed. You know, as a coach. Um, but you got to be Larry Brown or, you know, or uh, Billy Cunningham to get the Philadelphia 76. It's been, you know, it's been since 2001, man. Um, you know, and, and again, I mean, anybody who's ever covered the NBA, anybody who's been in locker rooms and Lord knows between two and us, we've been in well over 2000 of them. Um, you know, Doc is uh, he's a likable guy. He, he makes reporters feel good. And that's part of the art of being a coach. A lot of people don't know that. You know, you make certain reporters feel good. They will tend to write more favorably about you. Um, but, you know, yeah, you, you don't want to see it because it's kind of like, look, just play, the, just play the game at this point. You know, all right, JJ, you're in the booth now and you need ratings. Um, you know, your career is over. And, you know, just 
take it for what it is at this point. You know, it's it's over. You know, you. Yeah, but it's it's two ways to look at it, though, Mitch. Like, let's be real. Like, there's some people that agree with JJ said. I don't think JJ was doing it to get clicks. I just yeah. feel like he got, you know, fed up with him. And and who knows? Could it have been personal or not? I just feel like he got fed up with him. And yeah. and there's like, you know, there's like you either love him or you don't. You know what I mean? Don, yeah. You, know, you love him or you don't. I don't think JJ – um was trying to be malicious. It's just like to a point where I guess he felt like they were burying the lead, so to speak. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. yeah, and that's how he reacted. Yeah. And JJ is good on TV. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He took Dr. Jai. I mean, he replaced Doc, you know? Yeah, so. yeah. Well, listen, right now, I want to take a pause here and talk about FanDuel. All right. Get buckets with your first <laughs> bet on FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Because right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 if your bet wins. Bet on all your favorite NBA players and teams with quick bets, live same-game parlays, exclusive props, and much, much more. Just visit FanDuel.com slash on. And shoot your shot. FanDuel, official sportsbook partner of the NBA. Right now, I also want to talk to you about LinkedIn. When you're hiring for your small business, you want to find quality professionals that are right for the role. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs has the tools to help find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. LinkedIn isn't just another job board. LinkedIn has a vast network of more than a billion professionals, which makes it, which makes it the best place to hire. It gives you access to professionals you can't find anywhere else. LinkedIn does all that while making the process easy and intuitive. Hiring is easy when you have that many quality candidates. So easy, in fact, that 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. I found jobs on LinkedIn. It's real. So post your job for free at LinkedIn.com slash LockedOnNBA. That's LinkedIn.com slash LockedOnNBA to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Do it today, people. Uh, Definitely do it today. <laughs> I, I, forgot, I forgot the calling card. Yes, do it today. <laughs> yeah. But you know what? We talked about Doc, right? We talked about this and that. And I kind of like, I mean, it, it's good drama. You know, it's this, you know, I, I think Pat Bev needs to just chill a little bit. It sound like a little crazy at times. Some of the things Sam Pat, Pat Bev won an ESPN gig too. He knows that curtain's coming down soon. I know, I know, right? <laughs> that podcast. He wants that podcast to be on ESPN. So, so look. But here's the deal, Kyle Lowry. What's your realistic expectations for him? You know, I'm starting to. Uh, you know, it, it might be the fact that he's a Cardinal Doc kid. You know, he's a Villanova kid, and he's coming home. You know, he's he's like a lion in winter. He's coming home to play. I mean, when he's 38 years old. Um, but I'm, I'm looking forward. I'm, I'm looking to, you know, Tyrese Maxey. You know, we keep hearing about uh, how Tyrese absorbed some things from James Harden. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be glad to see him absorb some leadership stuff from because I don't think I don't think James Harden imparted a whole lot of that to Tyrese Maxey, but I could be wrong. And I, I could be sliding James. But I think he's gonna impart some leadership qualities to him. Um and and, and I think he'll continue to learn to be another you know more professional. And and, and Tyrese appears to be very professional for a 23 year old man. But I I just think being around a guy you know, like Kyle Lowry, who's mature enough to come home, because lots of times when players come to their back to their hometown, they come at the wrong time. You know, you 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 might not be ready. You know, you might come back and you're ready to run the streets. Kyle Lowry is kind of seasoned now, 
So coming back to Philly, would be, I think, will be a very good thing. And I, I think it will help Tyrese. I don't, you know, this team is going to be interesting to watch because they're in the fifth seed right now. You don't want them to fall into the play-in. But, you know, you know, it is, with, with, the, with this roster being fluid the way it is and, you know, hopefully they can get back on a winning streak. But I think I think Kyle will, 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 will have a good influence. Pick up good influence. Yeah, I mean, he seemed today like a lot of times you look at you look at players and all this in the press conference, but he had that like motivated look, like you can mm-hmm. tell, like he's here for business. Um, you know, we'll we'll see like the leadership from apparently, you know, he was um took a leadership role in today's practice. Today was their second day of practice. It was weird, like we were told yesterday that they didn't practice. And then today we found out that they did practice. They still doing that, huh? So that's what. So that's what happened. But anyway, so um, so it was it was one of the things where you talk about he has a, a leadership role. A lot of people think while wow, um, they think that he's going to get a lot of minutes, or or he's going to have a nice role, like. Some people said, don't, don't, don't. Somebody told me today, don't rule out him being in, the, not being in the starting lineup alongside Maxi um, because of what he provides. What, uh, ahead of DeAnthony Melton? Well, the thing is, Melton is going to miss tomorrow's game. Um, and then, but then he practiced, yeah, he practiced it uh, today. So it's one of those things he's going to miss tomorrow's game. But, I, I expect him to play on Friday, but he's going to be on a minute minutes restriction. So yeah. until Michael. they all get healthy, you know, Kyle may have to get some minutes. The only thing is, what are you going to do with Buddy Hill? The mm-hmm. whole nine. It's just a lot of questions. But with Kyle, you get a legit point guard. Again, I don't know how many points he's going to average. I don't know. You know, uh, I just don't know where he is. Yeah. Physically. As a basketball player, I know he shot like one for nine his last game, yeah. but but we'll we'll see, man. We'll, we'll see what type of leadership he has and all that. We'll see. Yeah, it's it's gonna be interesting, you know. Um, you know, I I, I, I darn sure don't want to see him taking minutes from Buddy Hill because Buddy Hill's really playing well right now, and obviously, you know, yes, they, they, they don't play the same position, but we are in this era of position this positionless basketball. I think that Kyle is somewhat of a holdover because he's in his 18th year in the league. And when he entered the league, it wasn't positionless basketball so much as it is now. But um, yeah, I think, I think he'll be beneficial. I think he'll be beneficial to that locker room. You know, we, without the presence of one Joel Hines and B, we have to go searching and trolling for things to talk about about this roster because right now, you know, that they've lost five of their last seven and they, you know, they, they, they did close out and they lost to Miami, but they did get a nice win in Cleveland. Um, but we just don't have a lot to talk about with them because they're missing the best player in the league right now. I mean, Lord only knows. I know we'll talk about that in the next segment um, when he's coming back. But I, I, again, I think, I think Kyle, will be good. I, I I think he knows that he is at the very end of his of his career. And I think I think he'll take pride in um you know coming back to play in you know the city that do you know that that's that they groomed him. Yeah well I mean we'll see. We'll see. I mean it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting. Um you know based on I again based off of sometimes you get a feel for people Mm-hmm. And you can get that serious feel, or you get the happy to be here. It seems like he's just ready to play. Yeah, you know what I mean. So yeah. again, we'll find out more tomorrow against the Knicks. Lord knows they they're going to need all the help they can get against that guard, the guards that the Knicks have. Yeah. Um, so we'll we'll see, but you know the fact that Miami traded them. I mean, let's face it, Miami traded them. Because they felt like he wasn't the same player, right? They felt like he wasn't that dude. Yeah, and that's why they got rid of him. So I think that Kyle is using this as motivation, and and going to see it. But we'll see. But again, Father Time is Father Time. You know, thirty seven, thirty eight. Yeah. So we'll see how much he can provide. But 
you know, I'm looking forward to, to, to seeing what, what happens tomorrow. I am. I'm really looking forward to seeing what he does tomorrow. It's going to be interesting. It's, 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 you know, it's some drama. Right now, I just want to jump in here and talk about Locked On. Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. And now it's also available on Amazon Fire TV in the free Fire TV channels app. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Find Locked On Sports Today, now available on the free Fire TV channels app. Do it today, people. Do it today. That's not all I want to talk to you about. I also want to talk to you about eBay Motors, passion, drive, and patience. What brings home the winning trophy is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. From superchargers, I know you have one of them, Keith, roof <laughs> racks, exhaust kits, LED highlights, and headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every single time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay Motors. Do it today, folks. Do it today. Now, here's the deal. So, we talked about Joel, right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, I mean, my thing is, it's tough because we all talk about their expectations. We talk about if he's coming back. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of optimism. I mean, we talked about it before. You know, to me, I'm still, I mean, I, I think that the hope is that it will come back. I also think that the Sixers are hopeful. I also think that they're going to downplay it because they don't want to pit you know, a high, huge expectations. And then if it gets delayed, but I think the, but I think like, I do think, I, I do think that he's going to come back. The reason being is because I feel like, and, and I said this before, I feel like it's all about the Olympics too. Like, I mean, don't, don't get me wrong. I think he wants to play this season, but I also think he wants to play in the Olympics this summer. I think he mm -hmm. wants to gain win a gold medal. So I feel like if he's ready, he's going to come back. He's going to get these reps in. He's going to do whatever he can. And then he's going mm -hmm. to play in the Olympics. I mean, that's what I think. That's what I think. Yeah. And that's not a knock against the Sixers. I think he wants to help them, you know, go in the playoffs as well. But I do believe that he, if he doesn't play now, he probably feels like, well, it doesn't maybe may not look well. I mean, I don't know if he feels or not, but it won't look good if he plays in the Olympics if he didn't try to come back and play for the Sixers. Yeah. No, and I hear you. I think if he um honestly, I, I'm I'm in favor of him sitting out the rest of the season. I know people are gonna say you're crazy. We you know why I waste what potentially could be his, his, him playing at a high level, a higher level than he's ever played. I don't think he's the, the level he was playing at a few weeks ago, I think that's gone for this season. You know, I I don't think he can achieve that. I think he'll be out too long. I think he'll have to play himself back into shape. Um, you know, we'll, we'll leave the decision up to the medical staff and we'll leave it up to him. But I'm and I, I have no animosity if he if he um, if he doesn't play anymore this regular season, because I'm, I'm I'm so sick and tired of him. I, I told you one time he's like Ultraman, you know, um, and for those who don't remember, that's that uh, cartoon. It was not a cartoon, but it was a. Uh, television show with a guy dressed up in a silver suit and he fought the monsters and that beeper on his chest started beeping indicating that he was getting weaker and weaker and weaker and he had to finish the monster off well that's joel you know joel 
just expires and wears down. And my hope is that, look, get that knee right. Get it as right, get it as, right as you possibly can. And then come back next season. And if you play in the Olympics, play in the Olympics. I mean, I think that, I mean, there's, there's no questioning that Joel has gotten much better because of the work that he put in. He put in the work. And that's why he took his game to this level we've never seen from him before. But if he does not want to play uh, again this season and, and, and they think it's in his best interest not to play, I'm all for it, man. You know, I, you know I'm, I'm all for it. Let Dow Moore finally earn his keep with some real deals over the summertime. Give him, I don't know, give him a Paul George. I know he's another guy who, you know, we have in questions about his injuries and his health. But if he plays in if he plays in the Olympics and doesn't play for the 76ers, I'm okay with that. Because he's got, you know, he'll be 30 this time next year. And it's it's time for them to, you know, if they don't get past the second round without him, they, they have no shot of getting past the second round. But if um, you know, if I, I want to see Joel healthy, man, I feel every I feel every spring, every single solitary spring, we get cheated to getting the chance to see him play because of some injury. I, you know, and, and and let's be quite honest, you know, no matter how much condition, he'll work hard. I'm sure he'll work hard to be ready, um, if he can play. And if he if he can play, I support him. But personally. I, if I don't see him on the court for the 76ers for the rest of the season, I'm, I'm okay with it. I'm completely okay with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, it, you know, it, yes and no. I get it. You can be okay with it, but don't don't be selling hope. <laughs> like, you know what yeah. I mean? Mm-hmm. Like if, if, yeah. if, if you just – don't want that to happen. Just shut it down. Just shut it down. Stop selling the hope. Stop selling the hope and getting people's hopes up high for this thing. That organization will never do that. They'll always sell you. They'll always they 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 they, they take the ringing brothers approach. They take yeah. the ringing brothers approach. Yeah, but <laughs> stop selling the hope. Yeah. But I, I, I honestly, but don't you think like if he doesn't come back? And if he plays in the Olympics, it'll look kind of shady. Or no, no, I think the fans just need to deal with it. I think they need to deal with it. If they, if 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 they have a problem with that man playing in the Olympics, I think you you I think you know, and, and not playing for the six. I think you you need to invest in your life and and and, and divest a little bit from. The, you know the fortunes of the 76ers because they'll be. I think the fortunes of the 76ers will be better. If he if he gets that knee, you know, tip top, um, gets around, you know, a taste of that, gets that Olympic taste, gets a chance to put a gold medal around his neck, and mm-hmm. come back here and says, "Look, look, you know, you know, I, I, I remember seeing him at Eagles games when they made that run to the Super Bowl uh, last year, yeah. um, and you know, you could tell he wants to be a part of that winning, and you know, I, I think he wants to win here in Philadelphia." You know, I, I don't need to see him come back here dragging, you know, and, 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 and something else happen. I just don't need to see that this year. Yeah, I'm with you. Well, look, y'all, we want to thank y'all for listening. Um, and we want y'all to have a blessed rest of the day, <laughs> a blessed, you know, uh, rest of the week, the whole nine. But we want to let you know you can get this podcast wherever you get your podcast at. Just free and available wherever you get your podcast at and on YouTube. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Deuces. Peace. Get that rest, Joel. Get that knee ready. Peace.